Hi, seventh grade. I just finished doing uh, the lesson for sixth grade for today. It's for Monday, March 30th, and my three-year-old came in and sort of video bombed us a little bit. So he's back downstairs with his brothers and hoping that I can um, share with you guys what you need to know to be able to do your work for today. You're going to be continuing on in your writing and grammar books thinking about library skills. And um, today I think you're going to want to be able to use your computer or some kind of device, whatever you have access to and whenever you can get access to it, um, to do page 352. What they're asking you to do is think about 10 different topics and then use a library catalog to be able to find a sample book on that topic. So obviously we can't go to the library and talk to the librarian or look at the catalog there, but now for San Jose, um, and I'm sure other surrounding towns if you live in Morgan Hill, they have a completely online catalog. So you should be able to access that from where you are. Um, if for some reason you can't um, use a, the library's catalog to look up some examples of this, do feel free to reach out to me. Just shoot me a quick email and um, I can point to you to another kind of library you might be able to look through. I know there's open catalogs for certain university libraries, so I could send you some links if uh, you don't have a library card in the town where you live. The other thing you're going to do on your library assignment today is you're going to read about specific kinds of works ways and places that you can get information. Things like dictionaries, almanacs, geographic dictionaries, a concordance. And so once you have a chance to sort of read what your book has for you on each of those, you're going to do an organizing activity where you think about where you'll find information. After you've done writing and grammar, we have our last lesson. We're winding down in this vocabulary book. So you're going to do lesson 15 today, which is again about ways to learn meanings. So we've talked about learning meaning from prefixes, from suffixes, from context clues, um, from other words that mean similar things in the sentence or the story where you're reading. And so today they're going to have you sort of do some of that again, but with different words in different contexts. And then you're also going to spend some time writing your own sentences with a group of vocabulary words that they'll give you. Over the next few days, we're going to finish up this book by doing the cumulative reviews. And then once we finished this, and we're very close also to the end of our writing and grammar book, we are going to start um, something I'm really excited about in just a couple of weeks. Um, we'll be done with most of your BJU curriculum for the year. So for the rest of the year, I have two novels for you. And we're going to be doing all of our writing, all of our reading, our vocabulary work, our reading comprehension. Everything will come from the novel. So I have packets that I've put together for you about both of these novels. And then I have copies of both of the novels for you. And you'll pick those up at Legacy later this week. Um, and in the coming days, I will tell you more about both books and um, more about some of what we'll be doing with those. Finally today, in your literature book, you have two different poems. Both of the poems are about um, a son making a realization or um, expressing something about their father. And I thought because I love to hear poetry read and because sometimes it takes a few times for us to really let it sink in and understand its meaning, that here on the video, I will read you the poems. And then I hope that on your own, you'll take the time to read it, possibly even out loud to yourself. The first poem is called Those Winter Sundays by Robert Hayden. Sundays too, my father got up early and put his clothes on in the blue black cold. Then, with cracked hands that ached from labor in the weekday weather made banked fires blaze, no one ever thanked him. I'd wake and hear the cold splintering, breaking. When the rooms were warm, he'd call, and slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of the house, speaking indifferently to him who had driven out the cold and polished my good shoes as well. What did I know, what did I know of love's austere and lonely offices? 
As you read it again, I would love for you to think about, um, there's a certain phrase, I'd love for you to find it, that is repeated twice in this poem. And I think as you sort of think about that phrase and what is, is happening, that it will sort of unlock the meaning of what the son is reflecting on and remembering, observing about his father. So will you find that phrase and then you can shoot me a quick message and tell me what the phrase is and how it helps you understand the meaning of those winter Sundays. What's happening for the sun? The second poem is called The Secret Heart. It's by Robert P. Tristram Coffin. Across the years he could recall his father one way best of all. In the stillest hour of night, the boy awakened to a light. Half in dreams, he saw his sire with his great hands full of fire. The man had struck a match to see if his son slept peacefully. He held his palms, each side the spark his love had kindled in the dark. His two hands were curved apart in the semblance of a heart. He wore, it seemed to his small son, a bare heart on his hidden one, a heart that gave out such a glow no son awake could bear to know. It showed a look upon a face too tender for the day to trace. One instant it lit all about, and then the secret heart was out. But it shone long enough for one to know that hands held up the sun. I wonder what you think about what the little boy is seeing his dad do. And what do you think that last stanza means? So think about that and uh, drop me a line. I'd love to hear from you guys and uh, look for Google Classroom. I'm working on getting that set up. I have emailed all of your parents and ask them to send me your Gmail addresses. So if they haven't done it or if they don't know what your Gmail address is or for some reason they missed the email, here's a little reminder. Ding, ding. Uh, Mrs. Smallwood wants everyone's Gmail address. Um, you can send that to lsmallwood at mylegacyschool.com and I'm going to use those to set up a Google Classroom for us. It'll have the same work that you're doing now but have an option to be more interactive, to send um, chats, both to me and to each other, and also to have a place where you can begin um, turning in some work so I can review and give you feedback. All right, you guys, happy Monday. Hope you're off to a great week.